Hey everybody, it's me Keith, Elder Rock, back with Arcade Laboratories. So today, today I have to do some, some repair on my multimeter. So part of being a good technician is making sure that your test equipment is running well. Well, my poor little voltmeter is not running well. And that's the whole repa point of repair, right? Don't throw your crap away. Try to fix it. Don't throw it away and buy a new one. Fix it. Break it down. Learn about it. And save some money. And, you know, these things for us have little sentimental value. Like this meter, it's been on three continents with me. It's been North America, the Middle East, Africa, and now Asia. It's been a good little meter for my work. I've, I've used it for the last 15 years on all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to show you the problem. It's kind of tweaking out. It's tweaking out. So let's see, let's open it up. I've never opened up a meter before, but let's let's learn together. All right. I'm using the small tripod. I'm, I'm trying different methods here. So let's um, get our field of play kind of set. Okay, so let's pop the batteries back in. And I'm gonna show you guys what it's doing. Cause, uh, in continuity mode, it's kind of tweaking out so if I apply any pressure to the function switch the function knob it likes to switch between diode mode and continuity so in diode mode it, it's somewhat solid but man I I use I use continuity mode a lot and it's been a total pain in my butt so it, it been shutting off um, I'll be buzzing in the middle of buzzing. It'll give a double beep and power down. Totally annoying. I've changed batteries two times in a row, not the battery. So let's flip this guy around and see if we can't spot some obvious problems. All right. So I'm going to try to keep my big hands out of the way. So let's let's get in here a little bit. All right. Let's pop these batteries out. Yeah, he's, he's definitely not happy. I do want a new Sawa meter, but I do want to try to fix this one. Okay, so popped off the back. And the first thing I noticed is this, uh, what is it, a 60 ohm? It's a 60 ohm, one, uh, one watt resistor is broken. Look at that. Cracked, broken right here some of the oops the ceramic coating is coming off and then you can see in the case it got hot it got hot enough to burn the the protective the protective metal there or not metal the protective paper all right so this guy is not good and it kind of sucks because i wish i had another meter to use on this meter but we don't so it's going to be more general inspection so let's go ahead and try to take this circuit card out and see if we can't find some stuff on the other side. One. And hopefully that battery, maybe the battery box will come out with it. I don't know. It's my first time. All right. All right. Let's see. Did that, did that pop us? Did that make us loose? No. All right. Is that guy molded in? What do we got here? I think the card will come out. Look, we got another screw behind behind these wires. Yeah, this was just a little cheap multimeter I bought years and years ago at Walmart. And if I didn't get it at Walmart, I got it at a place like Walmart. All right, here's another screw behind this. I think it's a um, capacitor. All right, I didn't want to make a long video, but um, I figured I'd bring you along. We're at four minutes almost already. All right, here we go. Be careful not to scratch anything on the back side. Looks like that battery box may come out. Yep, it's clipped in up here. Let's get a little tool so we're not breaking clips. Got a 
add a little clip action here. Let's see. Okay. Yep, I'm just probably going to break it. <laughs> Which way does he clip in? Oh, just like I think. Okay. So, I just need to give it... Actually, it probably... It probably will pull out. Yep. All right, so let's carefully and gently pull it apart. Okay, so we have we have a return wire here, or is that a hair? It might be a hair. Maybe that was our problem. Okay, wait, there we go. All right, let's look at our contacts because that's kind of what I was thinking I was it's not it's not happy between continuity and diode mode um sorry I'm gonna, wait, I'm gonna back you up a little and I'm gonna get I'm gonna check it out under my lens here um the contacts they're kind of they're flat on the little brass and the brass contacts are flattened a little bit. Probably years of use. There's some FOD down in the bottom of the case. Probably just for normal, normal use. So yeah, what I'm looking at, just inspecting the contacts. They're actually pretty clean, but they're a little bit flat. Uh, but no, nothing, nothing too major. Wait, what's that? There's a little, there's a little ball right here. I, yeah, there's a little. There's a little brass bearing or steel bearing there. Okay, so let's let's flip this guy over and see what we got here. Okay, um, some fod. It's got debris in here. Let's get that off of there. Um, I'll get you up. We're gonna try to inspect this get my light where maybe you can see yeah just kind of working on making better videos um let's see get you let's check it out the contacts initially i'm gonna use my little my little light here my magnifying light this is um six by yeah there's lots of fod in there oh my Lots of fod. So we're gonna clean this guy up. I mean the, the, the coating the coating on the contacts don't look too bad. I don't know which one is I don't know which one is for switching because it has an IC on the back that does all the switching. Yeah, if I had another meter, we'd just go through here and buzz. We got resistors, some capacitors. There's a tra uh, transistor. There's a transistor up here, two contacts here. Um, they look okay. Solder looks okay. Ah, I see where the other brass bearing goes, I think. Right here's one. I think that other one goes here. This one probably, hopefully it don't fall out. Um, the contacts for the test leads actually look pretty good too. There's lots of fod on there. So we're gonna clean this guy first and foremost. I'm gonna just use some, some alcohol. Yeah, what's that right there? So, okay, I'm looking at, I'm looking at this part of the trace, but I don't think it's supposed to be, I don't think it's supposed to be tinned or coppered. I thought maybe perhaps, yeah, all the traces look okay. So I think we're going to clean it. I know you, you can't see it. Let's see. I don't know if you can see all the fod, but there is all kinds of nasty stuff on there. It's really small, but it's really coated. Just a whole coating of, of gunk. Let's, um, let's blow it off. We'll take some alcohol to it. Try not to damage this board. And if I had, um, 
Yeah, I'm guessing this I see there controls. Nope, that's an LM324. I'm going to have to look that up. It's an LM324. I think that's some sort of... Um, I think that's some sort of voltage regulator. LM324. I think that's a voltage regulator of some sort. Uh, here's the IC. Here's the IC right here. But I don't think that's a problem. All the functions are working good. So it could be a little bit with that, that big resistor. I don't see any burned edges missing. There's a potentiometer there. Probably for um, calibration. Since it's calibrated pretty good, we're not going to mess with that. It has a 4 megahertz clock. Probably to run the run the um, IC in the CPU. The IC1. Yeah, we're not going to mess with that. Yeah, looks pretty good. Oy, what's up with that capacitor? That capacitor looks a little... I don't know if you guys can see this. I'll try to bend them out. Ruh. He is a little bubbled up on top, but it could be just, I don't know, let's try to get you in here. He is a little bubbled at the top. Well, what's the bottom look like? I'm going to look for some acid damage on him. Well, he's not leaking. 4.7 microfarad, 50 volt. Yeah, I think the top is just... Looks bowed out because actually they have a wrapping like that is not painted, that is not painted on, that is a wrapping and it's just kind of bowed out on the top like shrink wrap. I think it's okay. All right, it's oi, oi, okay. Well, oh, I gotta be careful with that. There's a tiny wire going, is that a wire or a hair? glue okay they just got some glue there well, let's be careful with that we don't need to go breaking things trying to work on it okay how's my light guys yeah that's pretty good all right so let's um get my brush out let's brush them off we're gonna get the alcohol clean those contacts put it together and see what we got maybe that little brass ball fell out somehow and Okay, can you guys, are we in the zone? Yep, let's gently clean him off. Yeah, so what you could do, if things were really bad, you could retin all of these surfaces. But I don't think they're, I don't think they're all that bad. They're not all that dirty either. All right, let me, let me get a closer look, see if we got all of that stuff off. Okay, I'm sorry guys, off camera. All right, all the FOD is gone. All right, let's get some alcohol on here. Could spray it probably, but uh, I spray bottles outside. I was cleaning something out there. So let's, let's just go after these contacts and let the alcohol run down a little. How's my light, guys? Not good. Let's just clean on these contacts. Oh yeah, they're they're dirty. I'm getting some dirt off of them. Yep, not burnt or anything, so go back and start getting this absorbed up and dried off. Yeah, all the LEDs work. Yeah, it works. It's good to get some of that flux off from the factory. That stuff could corrode, but after 15 years, if it hasn't, it's pretty it's okay. All right. One. Yeah. Yep, those look nice. Maybe. Now, let's go back to these contacts. Maybe we'll try to... Yeah, let's let that dry for a minute. Let's go back to these contacts. I'm always about improvement, making things better. Okay. So 
let's go back to this guy and see if we can't. There's that little brass ball. Will he come out? Okay, good. Then we can work on it together. Um, I might. I might. How soft is this? Maybe go. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. They come out. Let's. So we're gonna have to be careful when we put this back in. If, okay. So it's. They've got grooves here. They've got little fins that the brass will lock into. So that's good. I can't really mess it up putting it back together. But I don't know. I can mess up anything. All right. So let me check. It's pretty soft. Let me get my um, let me get my straight pliers here. Let me. I think we're going to come in and just try to sharpen up the point of that contact a little. I'm just going to go through. I'm just going to go through. These are the flat electronics pliers. So I'm just going to go through, get the bottom up in the corner, and just try to you know, just like reshape the top, square it up a little bit. Actually, it did. The other side yeah totally annoying when it you know how is that is that better let me look in the lens I believe so not quite not quite so flat so all right and we'll just have to be careful when we put it back together it did change the overall width of it but I think once you put it back together it will Wait, get in there all right right small parts this is should have seen the small stuff I was working on yesterday I did not take a video of crazy small stuff working on a game board that had SOG 40. Yeah, that, okay, let's do the same thing for this. Let's do the same thing for this guy. I'm just gonna come in, see if I can get keep it in the work zone for you guys. I'm just gonna come in, recrimp. Getting right up in that just right up in the corner, just giving it a little pinch. Try to get that flat out of it. I don't really want to go rebending the whole thing. I just want to reshape it a little, give it a little bit more of a, a tip. So it's kind of still flat, which is good, but it's definitely a little better. Okay, let's get this guy. Just two of them? Yep. Alright. Um, wait, wait. And they're light. There's like, feels like nothing. Okay, gotta come on each contact, give it a pinch, flip it around, give it another pinch. Yeah, maybe we'll just take this video all in one one shot. I thought I might have to cut off camera, but it looks like we're doing okay. We're about there, unless it takes me forever to put it back together, which it may. At this rate, it may take me forever to get it back together. Okay. Should probably pull that outside one off, and then that guy will be easy to get on. Okay, we're going to take this one off and then put that other one on. Breaking my own rules. Start from the inside, work back, and then on reassembly, start from the back and work in. All right, let's give this guy a little pinch. Wait, he's so small. Yeah, I'm not really trying to change it too much. There we go. All right. 
I should I should I should clean these a little bit too. Let me grab my let me grab my little Then, uh, yeah, let's just let's just clean these a little bit too. Just give them a little wipe down on the on the contact. Hard to tell if anything's coming off, but it can't hurt. We're here, so okay. Let's get this guy put back in. Okay, good. Look at the back side. Yeah, he's, he's, he appears clean, but that, that doesn't really mean anything. Wait, let's, uh, yeah, I know I'm letting alcohol run all over my hands, but that's okay. Put some lotion on later. Yeah, nothing really coming off of him. But the nylon brush is a little abrasive too, so let's kind of clean that that surface up real good, like new. Yeah, for it being light. Man, I'm glad that didn't go flying across the room. Okay, let's go in. Let's take it, put him in like that. Man, my tweezers, come on. I can just put it in with my bare hands. Probably easier. Just line him up in the groove. Almost there, guys. There we go. And this guy's got to go back in, but we got to clean him. He actually looks a little. I see some stuff on him. Let's let's give him a little. Let's give him some cleaning, some love. All right. Okay. About all we can do without having another meter to really go in. I am going to order a, a new resistor though. I got to order some surface mount LS245s for another repair, so it'll be a good time. Let's add it to the order. Right. Stay in there. Okay, I think I think he's in proper lined up in the groove. There it goes. And we did not clean we did not clean this one. Let's see if we can just do it while it's in here. Okay, cool. So we have we have a brass ball to figure out where it goes. have a brass or a steel ball to figure out where it goes. Okay. All right, so one minute. I'm going to, I don't want this video to take forever. I'm going to find out where this thing goes and we'll come back. Okay, stand by. Okay, I figured it out. I, they go, I hope they go. I think they go here, one there, one there for the rotator switch. So we're going to put him back together in the off position. Let's get him hopefully in without knocking those. Knock, yep, I just knocked it out. And across the desk it rolls. Come here. Come here, you. Okay. Just gotta drop it down in there gently. My fingers were weak and 
drop it down in there. Nope, knocked it out again. Yeah, it's harder doing repairs on camera. Oh, man, I'm going to lose this thing before it's over. That's funny. Okay. Let's get this thing in here. Okay, there we go. Yep, I can feel it seated in the off position. Okay. So now, let's get... Let's get this guy back over here. So I think... This guy applies pressure. Nope. I'm talking the whole the completely. Yeah, so he's he's going to apply the spring. That spring is going to apply pressure, I think, down on the rotator wheel. So let's get him started back in. Okay. All right, come on, baby. So yeah, the battery box and the circuit card, I kind of want to drop in. I kind of want to drop in at the same time. All right, there we go. All right, so we got to line up the connectors, the cable connectors. They pulled out a little hard, so I might have to just give it, help them in a little. Yeah, try not to force anything too much. There we go. And then, yeah, oh, I forgot about the clip. Crap. Okay, we're going to have to pull that back out. I'm going to zoom out. You guys got the point of what's inside? So let's pull him out. There we go. We're going to get him slid into where he goes. Now we can get these things down. Hopefully not disturb our rotator switch. All right, everything's in, so now everything can go down. Okay. Now this has got to line up. That clip is coming loose, actually. Come on, get in there. There you go. Now, she, now everything can go down together. There we go. Okay. I think it's all in. Let's, um, okay, let's get our two screws in. The one here. Get our screws in. Yeah, I wish we could play some music or something. Kind of boring. No music. I have it on when I'm not filming. But YouTube will block it. Copyright infringement. Be jamming out something. Jamming out some Queen or some Stone Temple Pilots or man, there's all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna put on some Bruno Mars. Okay, there we go. So nothing's going to fall out. Let's get our batteries back in and see if a little maintenance fixed us up at all. All right, we're in the off position. Uh-oh. <laughs> now it's not even powering on. Oy, did I get the batteries in the right way? Hey, this might be a good... Um, yeah, I think I did actually. All right. Oh man, epic fail. All right, I got I got something in continuity mode. Uh, maybe I jacked that screen up. Oh, actually, there we go. Wait. So uh, the screen contact. I got to get in there. Maybe the screen contacts got janky. But, kind of the same deal, huh? So it needs, unless, unless the contacts, unless I dinked up the, unless I dinged up the contacts and actually made them worse. 
Let's, um, it seems if I put pressure on it here or here, yeah, if I put pressure on it here, I have to be careful where I pinch. Yeah, something's not happy. I think it's the screen connector, the segment connectors aren't, aren't happy. Okay, let me cut off here and check it out. One minute. Okay, so we're back. Gonna be an awfully long video about nothing again. But um, I wanted to show you guys underneath here so there is the um, see that red strip that is your LCD connector bar then on this side on the CCA we have we have a strip here let's go ahead I do want to clean that so let's just clean this guy while we're here But he looks totally clean from being mated and that whole time. Hopefully I didn't jack that screen up by pulling them out. It looks like there's a little filament here. But I think that's all it was is a contact problem. Just a contact problem. Yeah, the batteries are still in. We're live. I'm going to zoom you guys out a little. Alright, so clip first. Nope, that's just a retaining that little black that little black C clip is just for retaining nothing electrical because it is moving around quite a bit. Let me get these guys lined back up. Yeah, I hope this meter works actually. I'm I, I like it. It's small, works good, has all the functions I need. I got I have flukes at home back at the other location. Definitely not my only meter. So yeah, this guy has got to make good contact. So let's put, this time, let's put all four screws in. And I kind of have an idea. If it's like a contact problem, I might, might add in some little washers to these screws to get them, get it pulled down tighter. Or we might just put the, we'll put the case on, the back case on, and maybe that will give it enough. So like, yeah, when I put things together, I like, just to take them all in kind of loose make sure whatever you're mounting uh, mounting down whether it's a circuit board or a transmission or a head on an engine um, plates covers yeah take them in evenly and slowly and kind of make sure that you don't crack anything you can kind of feel oh my god I just cranked on this fucking and don't do what I just did. I just cranked on that variable resistor. Ah, Jesus criminy. Yeah, Keith may be getting a new fucking uh, meter. What an idiot. <laughs> don't do that. There's a tiny... There's a tiny variable resistor here next to the screw. I, I just cranked the wrong one. Probably one turn. Son of a gun. Is it marked on here? No. Son of a... Bitch. All right, so we might have to calibrate. This might be a calibration video too. Son of a gun! Can't believe I just did that. Talking and filming. Damn it! All right. Hey, there we go. Now we're back. Oh, all the functions are working. Yeah, the switch that feels a little bit better, a little bit more responsive, actually. Now, let's get it down to where there's diode mode. And hey, look at that. No more. Oi, look at that. No glitchiness. No glitchiness. Let's put the back cover on. Actually, let's just put the back cover on without the screws. Yeah, that is probably for over, probably AC protection, I'm guessing. AC or, or just a, a protection of the circuit if, if you go too high amperage on a AC or DC I'm guessing I'm not I'm not an expert but that's or or it could be used I ah, you know what I bet it's for um, when you use DC 10 amps or more I'm sure of it 
kind of help uh, step it down and not fry the rest of your stuff. All right. So we're going to put this guy together, and we're going to get the leads, and we're going to measure some stuff since I cranked on that. Um, since I cranked on the... Oh, boy. Since I cranked on that variable resistor. So let's... Let's grab some some clippy clips, and we'll get we'll we'll measure some known resistors, and see if we are jacked up, and we'll measure some good voltage. All right, that sucks. Okay, where's my? Oh, there it is. All right, I had another my black lead. Okay. Um, I think I had, this is either going to be like a 47K or a, I think that's going to be a 47K, I think. So let's, let's try, let's see, resistance, resistance is futile, all right, it's 47 or maybe 22, oh, let's go up to ohms. Um, what am I doing here? Oh, I'm an idiot. Yeah, filming is just really weird because when I work by myself, it's a little different. There we go. 10K. I think that's a 10. That is a 10K. Yeah, I might have to get... I wonder if that's what that variable resistor is for. 10K, almost 10K, plus minus 5. That looks a little far off to me. That looks a little far off to me. All right, I knew I had another resistor up here. Yeah, I was uh, doing some probing around on a board. This is probably 22. I bet that variable resistor is off. Okay, let's let's do some voltage. Get the power supply turned on here. Get the arcade laboratory. Power supply turned on, and let's get this meter swapped out. We're just going to go ahead and probe on the, we're just going to go ahead and probe right in the lead. Let's, let's measure out on our 12. I got 12 volts set up over here off camera. Let's see what we got. Okay, oh, let's go 12 volts. DC probably yep I might have to get in there and adjust that variable resistor let's go let's take it down to 6 volts let's see because I know we were before when I checked my power supply I was like really close um alright let's check alright got almost 25 volts on this on the other side. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So that guy's looking okay. Actually, I got 40, 24.9. There's 25 on the money. 2 millivolt, 1 millivolt off, 25.1, 25.2. Let's go. Let's take this other side up to 12 volts. Now, for some reason, it's either my, now, now I need another meter. <laughs> so it's either low. Yeah. Okay, so hey, but anyway, I, I will go through and calibrate. I won't do any more video action on this. I'll go through and um, we'll get. And let's go back to this these capacitors. I cannot not mess with stuff, so let's go back to here. This is supposed to this is supposed to be twenty. Wait, let's go back to Yeah, so the meter is actually working better now. So we fixed it, and if I wouldn't have been a dumbass. If I wouldn't have been a dumbass, we would have been finished. I don't know what's going on here on the resistor. Ohms. Maybe I'm just not making good contact.
I think that's off. I got to get, I, I'm going to cut the video and I'm going to get some known good. I'm probably going to get into my 1% resistors because those are like spot right on the money. Throw those in and see what my measurements look like. But hey, I'm going to upload this today. There's a little, you know, the, the, the point of the video. Yeah, we, we learned about a multimeter. We learned about a multimeter. You know, just keeping your stuff running and testing. As a technician on the bench, you have to trust your equipment. And half that's half the battle. That's what I tell my students. That's, you know, how I learned where I worked. In my experience, you have to trust and know your test equipment. You have to have proper test equipment. In my job, we have calibration, periodical calibration at home. We don't do that so much. But our Kate Laboratories, I, I want to have some sort of periodical calibration. I, I, I want to tell people, yeah, when I work on your stuff, I know my scope is good. I know my power supplies are good. I know my earth grounds are good. I know my electrical ground systems are good. You know, when you're buying boards and buying parts, especially in the arcade world or any, just anywhere really, these are questions you should be asking the seller. Hey, it's like, you know, you see some jinky setup in their pictures on their post. It's like, is there a three, is there a ground point? Um, is your system good? You know, what What don't you see off camera? Are you using some jinky video converter to, to get a display to trick you into buying a good board? So, it's important for me. I want people who buy my stuff to, to know, like, hey, this guy's legit. His workbench, his test equipment, his everything is good. So, that, anyway, that was a fun little video. That's just checking out a multimeter. It works. I'll probably still buy another one. Actually, this is a good reason to buy another one. I need a meter to test my meter when I have to tear them apart. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Awfully long video. I hope you liked it. I like making them. Anything else you want to see, uh, let me know in the comments below. Or if you hate it, let me know in the comments below. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.